All right, cool. Welcome to tonight's team call, girls. I am Corey Mayo, your CEO and founder of Team Living Healthy and Fit. Tonight, we're going to be talking about growing your social media, kind of cleaning up your social media, and um, creating your brand, okay? How we want to represent ourselves because we, we talk about it a lot, but sometimes we need that reminder that our social media is our storefront, essentially, right? When people come to our social media, that's where they get to learn who we are, what we're about, what we talk about, maybe what we're offering, okay? So we wanna make sure that that's something that we are um, properly representing ourselves. And so it's a really good idea to um, go back and look over your posts especially if you don't feel like you're getting a lot of engagement all of a sudden or something has changed. But in general, it's a really great idea to go back and kind of scroll through what you have talked about on your social media, you know, every two weeks, every three weeks, just to kind of take a, a, a survey of what's getting engagement, what's not. Maybe you're lacking a little bit of consistency, but helping your business grow by taking an evaluation of what you've been talking about, okay? How you've been representing yourself. And something I want you to think about when you go and you look at your social media, would somebody know that you're into health and fitness, that you are working on leading a, a healthier lifestyle through nutrition and fitness? And would they know that you offer services? Okay, would they know that they could come to you if they had a question about nutrition or clean eating or anything like that? Are there any call to action posts that are going to let them know that you are open for business or that you are someone that is a resource? Okay, because we want people to know that when they are ready, that we are someone that they can come to and that they can trust. Okay. So we have five tips. Number one is we are going to evaluate our posts. We are gonna go back through our social media. We are going to look at, do people know what we do, that we are into nutrition and fitness, that we are working on leading a healthier lifestyle? It doesn't mean perfection, you guys. So often, social media is the highlight reel, right? And the highlight reel can lead other people into depression and it can make them put us on such a pedestal that they don't relate to us. So we have, if we struggle, which we all do, right? Because we're all human. If we have a bad day or we slip up on a meal or maybe we feel like crap because we ate a not so great meal or, or we had too many drinks or whatever, or we missed a workout or life got in the way, don't be afraid to share those things. But share the flip side of it on how you're going to get back on track and you're going to get back into your routine because it's what you're working towards most of the time, right? So just keeping in mind that it's not about showcasing. It's not about being perfect or always having the perfect shot. Um, sometimes I actually just posted about it. Um, I was taking my um, progress pictures and my pictures just are not representing how good I feel. And so I shared that, that then I started like having that mental battle that am I really making the progress that I think I am because that's a struggle that I still have, right? So it's okay to share your struggles. Um, it, it makes you more relatable when you have struggles. So evaluating our posts, we want to look at engagement. It used to be um, before that you wanted a ton of people as your friends or a ton of people following you if you're on Instagram or if you have a Facebook like page that you have a ton of likes and you have a ton of followers and that you were getting a lot of likes on your posts or your content. Now it's so much more about engagement. You can have a smaller amount of followers but if you have an incredible engagement rate where people are building relationships with you through posts because they're engaging in conversation with you on your posts, that's what we want to work towards. Likes are cool, but they fade. They didn't, it didn't touch somebody enough to make a comment. It didn't relate to them enough or strike a chord enough for them to take the second and type something out and comment and engage on that post with you. Okay, so what we really want to start thinking about is asking questions, getting people to engage, 
engaging, um, posting engaging content. And sometimes that content is just a shared post. It's not always like some post that you thought out and you poured your heart out. Prime example, I shared yesterday on my Facebook like page, two pictures side by side. And it was a mom trying to take a shower and all three kids asking her for something while she's in the shower. And the, and meanwhile, it says, meanwhile, the dad's sitting on the chair reading a paper because that is the truth. And that is mom life. And that is just how it is. And it had like eight shares and like over 70 something likes and people commenting on it and tagging people because it's relatable right? It doesn't always have to be nutrition and fitness. It's just relating to, pe relating to people so that we can start conversation. Okay. So I want you to think about that too. What is something that people relate to? Another one that I recently posted that's super stupid and simple is um, I had all the laundry done on a Thursday, but it was actually the laundry I was finishing up from a week ago. And I said, so does it count that I have laundry done early or that I'm just really behind? I'm going to take the mom win and say I have it done early. And a ton of people commented on it because that's real life. We all have laundry baskets that have laundry in them. Okay, so it's not always about being perfect, but just being real and relatable and getting that conversation going back and forth with people. Okay, um, thinking about the time of day that we're posting, right? We want to make sure that um, we're not posting all of our content first thing in the morning. And typically, our call to action posts or our hook posts. Um, where you're inviting someone to comment below if they want to join you or comment below if you've ever felt like this or whatever to get them to engage with you. You really want to make those your evening posts. And I've seen a couple um, coaches make them first thing in the morning. It's, that's really not a great time because people are scrolling social media, but they're not, they're like busy getting ready for work, just scrolling, right? They're not really sitting down looking at social media to engage or really think about things. So sometimes you can get some really good engagement right before the lunch hour because people are scrolling and looking at Facebook on their lunch hour or social media in general, Instagram as well. But if you look at algorithms, it'll show you that peak times are typically from 7 to 9 p.m. And that's because dinner is usually done. You know, think about your following. They're probably married. They probably have families. And even if they're not, we're all an older crowd, not old, <laughs> but we're not in college anymore or younger than that, right? We're, we're typically have a pretty good routine where we all get up and go to work or we all get up and have a day that we do things with our kids or whatever. And so from 7 to 9 p.m. is kind of our unwind time, if you will, before we, you know, sit down or go to bed for the evening. So thinking about the time of day and really kind of taking note um, when your followers are engaging the most. That is when you want to do your hook posts, also known as a call to action post, okay? Um, and then I want you to look at your social media and how often are you posting a call to action? Because if you don't see one in the last couple posts, you're not doing them often enough. Okay, we used to be able to get away with um, posting a call to action two to three times a week. Now it needs to be more like daily because the more we get people engaging with us, now that doesn't mean that we're saying join my challenge group every time, right? A call to action could just be like, have you ever felt like this? Or what do you think about this? Or what are you having for dinner tonight? It's asking them, it's calling them to take an action right? To comment below or to drop a gift below. Because what happens is the more that people are commenting and engaging on our posts, the more Facebook says, oh, well people, and even Instagram now, because their algorithms are much like Facebook now, they say, oh, well people are engaging on this post. It must have value. And so they'll push it into more people's news feeds. Okay. So making sure that we are posting a call to action every day, if not, if not every day, every other day. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about on posts is to encourage you, if you're not already, um, following Heather Shields, 
you don't have to friend her because she is a fellow coach. And I always encourage people just follow somebody because on a personal page, uh, you cap out at 5,000 and you really don't, as coaches, we don't want to fill our friends list to that 5,000 people with other coaches. So go to Heather Shields. She's in our team page because she's amazing. And, and we work with her, you know, as a team, I work with her um, quite often. Um, just go and follow her and just kind of check out some of her posts for inspiration. And sometimes I will share them in our group as well, because she just has a way of articulating things and, and putting a different spin on sharing her story or inviting people to join her journey. And, um, I never encourage you to copy and paste, but use it. You can use it for inspiration. You know, if you like the way that she shares things, but Heather is very good at articulating posts. So I encourage you to start following her on Instagram and on, um, Facebook. Okay. Number two is quality over quantity. So I was recently talking with um, Jamie and, you know, it used to be on social media that we would post three to five times a day so that you were getting into the newsfeed more often. Well, now that will actually make your posts compete with one another. So you want to do two, maybe three um, good quality posts a day. Okay. I typically post twice a day on all of my platforms and then I do stories all day long because stories seems to be where it's at. Um, but I post first thing in the morning and then I post in the evening on my personal page, on my per like my Facebook personal profile. And then on my business page on Facebook, I'm typically posting mid to late morning and then evening again. Okay. Does that make sense? So just making sure that you're putting good, valuable content out there. And if you haven't yet heard of the color wheel, basically you can Google search color wheel and it's just like, I, like 12 different colors. And you fill in each color with something that makes you who you are, something that you enjoy doing. Um, and it can include Beachbody, but not all of them should be related to Beachbody, right? Because you are more than nutrition and fitness, okay? You're a mom, you're a wife, um, you um, are an aunt who loves her niece, you love guacamole, you love peanut butter, you love tacos. I mean, whatever it is, you're a dog mom, whatever. You are so much more than Beachbody. So that color wheel or writing a list of seven to 10 or 12 things that make you who you are gives you content to talk about, right? So you don't feel like you're always trying to come up with content about health and fitness, okay? It provides um, uh, uh, it provides more about you, right? It makes you relatable again. You want to make sure that the pictures have good quality lighting. I know we've talked about this before and I'm going to take it off again. This little sucker was like $9 on Amazon. Invest in one, guys, because it, our days are getting brighter now. Um, but at night, if you're taking pictures at night and stuff like that, you need to have good lighting. Think about what posts when you're scrolling social media, whether it be Instagram or Facebook, what grabs your eye? Not typically the muddled doll pictures that don't have good lighting, right? It's the ones that have good lighting and are bright and vibrant. So you want to make sure that you're um, providing good lighting. It's clear every now and then. I don't know how many of you do this and I never thought about it until I watched a training uh, like two years ago. Wipe your camera off. <laughs> Because especially if you have kids, they grab your phone or when you grab your phone and there's fingerprints on the lenses, that makes the quality of your picture worse too, okay? So you want to make sure that you have a cloth and you just clean it every so often and make sure it's clean so that you're getting good quality pictures. Um, we already talked about content and value. Um, there was something else I was going to say about the pictures and lighting. Make sure that you're putting you in the picture too. Okay, your pictures are going to do so much more and relate to people so much more than a meme or just a food pic or a stock photo of a food pic. Sometimes I'll take pictures of just my food and try and do different angles, but I love taking a picture where I'm holding the plate or the bowl and I'm kind of in the background and then I kind of blur myself out or just kind of, you know, have that depth effect. But then you still see my face. I'm still branding me. You still see me. I know what I was going to say. Uh, a couple apps that are my favorites. I wanted to tell you girls as well. So I use Avery. 
I think that's how you say it, is A-V-I-A-R-Y. That's typically what I edit almost all of my pictures in. Just for color, I can change the brightness, I can change the contrast, vibrance. Um, you can blur things out. You can even make it black and white and then go in with your finger and make just certain things color. So that's one to do with like Energize or different things like that where you wanna showcase the yellow drink. Um, another one of my favorites is Pixar, which is what I use to do my um, side by sides, but the side by sides that have like the white casing around them. Uh, split Pick Pro or Split Pick is one that you can do side by sides, and you can use this little lever um, that like fades the two pictures together. So if you saw my side by side of my face pictures last night, I know Heather uses this a lot. Um, I got it from her that would like blend your two pictures together. So that's pretty cool because it, it makes it look more of like a transition, right? Instead of just having one picture, one picture, it's like a blended photo and it's the before and after. So that's pretty cool to change, change things up and not just have the same side by side every time. And then if you have an iPhone, I definitely encourage word swag. Um, it's just word swag. Uh, you can, they have templates in there, but there's all kinds of different um, fonts that you can add crazy cool lettering to your images as well. So maybe if you like doing inspiring quotes, you'll start making your own memes, you know, that have your pictures of you doing workouts in a little sidebar. If you're doing that, just do a short video of you working out, freeze frame it and do a screenshot on your phone. That's how I do mine so that I can get like me in action without like trying to hold a move for 10 seconds while my camera is counting down. Just take a video of yourself and then pause it and then you can take a screenshot. Okay. So um, moving on to number three is avoiding branding Beachbody. So Guys, Beachbody is a billion dollar company, a multi-billion dollar company. They spend millions in branding our products. We don't need to help them in that department, okay? And it hurts you when you post about Shakeology or 21 Day Fix or using the names of the products because Facebook sees that as you're trying to make a sale and they go, and your post dies almost immediately, and then it's gonna get zero eyes on it, okay? Besides the fact that you're not Beachbody. Yes, do Beachbody products work and they are amazing? Absolutely, that's why you're a coach. You believe in the products because you either have experienced them for yourself or you have seen how amazing that they have helped other people. But you are so much more than just the products you are going to be their coach who's going to be their cheerleader and help them move through the program, right? So brand yourself, stand in front of the products. It's okay that we offer them and that we share them. I don't want you to think that we should be ashamed of them, but we are branding us, okay? So when you're talking about Shakeology, maybe you're talking about your daily dose of chocolate because you love sweets or your superfood drink, or I mean, there's so many different things. Um, Energize, I call it my, um, my yellow drink. That's just what I've always called it. Uh, Heather calls it her unicorn drink. Some people call it mommy juice. Uh, Jatana Jackson, who is killing it on Instagram stories and is a very successful coach, she calls it mom crack. I mean, whatever works for you, um, you can use different names for it that also creates curiosity. And people say, well, what is that mom crack? Or what is that unicorn juice? Or what is that yellow drink you're always talking about? Because I am exhausted with having kiddos running around. How do you keep up? So just standing in front of the product, showing that you're using them, but not putting the name out there. Because as soon as we put the name out there, not only does it kill our posts, but it eliminates that conversation. We immediately eliminate ourselves from the equation because if that person wants to learn more, guess where they're gonna go? Google. And then they're probably gonna get connected with some other coach because they purchased just from beachbody.com, okay? So don't eliminate yourself. Don't do yourself that disservice. Just stand in front of the products. You can talk about it. You can be proud of them, absolutely. Instead of 21 day fix, my 21 day 
um, portion control program or my 21 day program or it, there's so many different ways that you can word it without using the actual name okay get creative with it play around with it um, curiosity marketing so um, I talked about that a little bit is you know we're standing in front of the products but you want people to ask questions like what is that yellow drink or or what is that superfood shake that you drink every day that helps you avoid the sweets because I love sweets or I love chocolate you want people to start asking you questions, whether it's on the post or they're sending you a private message or they're responding to your story. You want to post in a way that people are asking questions about what you're doing, okay? Number four is to connect with your followers, okay? So the people who are liking and commenting on your posts, we need to be engaging with those people. We need to first engage back on the post, whatever comment they made. Sometimes you're just replying an emoji. Sometimes it's a GIF. Sometimes you're actually replying words. It doesn't matter, but we need to make sure that we're engaging back with those people because they took the time to comment and participate on our post. So we need to make sure that we're taking the time to acknowledge them and comment back. Okay. Also, if you have a call to action post, and let's say you're inviting people into a challenge group or you shared your journey and you're inviting people to join you and you say comment below, you know, if you're ready to start or comment below if you have questions or comment below if you'd like to know what I'm doing or whatever. And you don't get a whole lot of comments. Don't panic because it happens to all of us, even Meg who earns a million dollars a year and is a 15 star diamond, it still happens to her too. But what you do then is the people who liked it you reach out to that person, as long as they're not a coach or working with another coach, you reach out to them and you just say, hey girl, I just wanted to reach out and say thank you so much for your love and support on my post. I really appreciate you. It means a lot that you took the time to engage on my post. I was just curious, have you considered joining us girls in the boot camp I was talking about or were you simply sharing your support? Simple question. I'm not leaving it in their court by saying something like, you know, if you have more questions, just let me know because that's kind of salesy, right? And it kind of feels icky. And even if they did have questions, they might have kind of a, a bad taste in their mouth from that. So if we say something more like, you know, is that something that you were considering doing yourself or were you simply sharing your support? It gives them an out. And even if they are interested, but maybe they're just still a little nervous about asking, it gives them an out. And it shows that we're not just messaging them to get the sale or to push products or to get them to join us. It shows that we genuinely appreciate them sharing um, love and support on our posts and that it's okay if that's what they were doing, right? Okay, cool. Um, number five is, so last one. Number five is remembering that quote that I shared in our group, um, I think it was two weeks ago. Um, that we aren't on this journey just for us anymore. The minute we decide to become coaches and we start putting ourselves out there and we start sharing our journey, we are doing it for everyone who is watching. And I want you to remember that. And I want you to remember that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to let your guard down. And we're doing it for more than just ourselves now. So we have to show up. We have to, this is our storefront. If you went to go to Starbucks, you know, say you went there every single morning and all of a sudden they just started to be randomly closed with no explanation and then they're closed for a week and then they're open for a week and then they're closed for a day and then they're open and they're closed for a couple of days and then they're open and you couldn't rely on them. What are you going to do? You're going to find a different coffee shop or a different place to go hang out with your friends or whatever. So us being consistent on our social media is our storefront. It's showing people that we are open, right? That we are always here to love and support them. And remember this, people are always watching you. They may not like, they may not comment, they might not say anything at all ever until they're ready. And that's okay. That's why we share what we're doing because we're doing it anyway, right? We're doing, we're doing the steps anyway. We're doing our personal development. We're doing our workouts. We're doing our nutrition. We're working on leading a healthier lifestyle. So why not inspire those who maybe need a little light in their life, 
right? And if you are a newer coach and you worry about the naysayers or the people who are going to, you know, have things to say, those people are going to have something to say anyway, because they're insecure about themselves. It has absolutely nothing to do with you. And I can say this honestly, that I had very few of those when I first started as a coach and I have zero now. And I don't know if it's because people just know I don't give a shit what they think, you know, they can say whatever they want to say, or if it's just because I've surrounded myself with such high and empowering people that I just don't attract that vibe. I don't know what it is. I can't, you know, I can't say, but you do you, you do it to inspire those around you. There was a coach in the 80 day obsession test group who said, uh, that shared one of her best friends, uh, totally caught her down this week for doing the program for dialing in her nutrition, for doing her fitness and her workouts and all that totally caught her down and made her feel like crap. And she's like, I just don't know what to do. And I flat out told her, and you know, there were several other coaches who commented to empower her and love her. And I said, you are doing this for you and nobody else. And you don't owe them an explanation for why you're doing this for you. And it's okay if they don't get your journey. They will someday. And if they don't, that's too bad for them. But you don't owe anybody an explanation for why you do what you do to improve your life. Okay. So you keep focused on what you're doing, why you're doing it and your goals. And I promise you that you will only lift up and move forward. Okay. That's all I have, my loves. So what I would love to do, um, Jamie, I will unmute you just in case you do had any thoughts while we were, while I was sharing that. And um, Amanda, I will unmute you too. Do either of you have any thoughts? If I do have a question, if you can hear me. Yes, ma'am. Go for it. Okay. So I have seen other people in various different types of um, products and groups and whatnot that they're trying to get out there on social media sites to create a secondary Facebook page. So separate from their own personal profile. Um, what do you guys think about doing that to get our information out rather than utilizing our own personal Facebook? Um, I think that at a certain point that it is a good idea. Um, I'm going to mute you real quick just so there's the feedback. Um, okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I personally have a page as well. I will, and I've, I've talked to some of the other girls about this. I will be perfectly honest with you. I don't think it's a smart choice as a new coach. I feel like it, you can utilize and gain so much momentum and growth and consistency by doing your personal page first and tapping into your warm market um, than using a Facebook page. A Facebook page takes a ton of work and that's just being perfectly honest. It takes a ton of work and consistency. Um, and investing in ads and different things like that. And the algorithms are constantly changing. It is, it can be overwhelming, especially to a new coach who's trying to learn the business and, and just build consistency in their business already. So I think that that's absolutely something down the road. It's not typically something I encourage to do right off the bat. Um, because I think it, it can lead to burnout and just feeling too overwhelmed. So my recommendation is to build great consistency on your personal page. And when you have good consistency there to start tapping into Instagram, Instagram is huge, huge right now. And there are a ton of people having success there. And there are a ton of people to network with there. And it, there are more and more people switching over to solely Instagram and fading out of Facebook. And so I think as a smart business decision, if you're going to choose two platforms to utilize your personal page, I mean, Facebook is not dead by any means. I don't want it to make it sound like that, but I think that you're going to have much more return um, and growth in your business if you're investing in your personal page consistently and then starting to branch out in your Instagram story stories and Instagram posts. So I'm going to unmute you again real quick. Does that answer your question? Oh crap. Wait. Honestly. Okay, now you're unmuted. <laughs> oh, can you hear me? Yep. You're good. Okay. Yes, that did answer my question and I really appreciate the honesty 
consistency and the leadership. Um, if I'm being completely honest back, I am nervous at what my my current friends on Facebook, how they're going to react. Um, not that I, not that I'm scared of losing Facebook friends. I, you know, that's pretty shallow. But I don't want to off put anything that we respect and cherish, you know, having that interaction with. Um, and also, I do not have an Instagram. So this is going to be a little bit new for me. And I'm excited that girls. Yeah. And I mean, I think here's the thing. Um, the people who unfriend us because we're sharing inspirational quotes and we're, we're bettering ourselves and it's not like we're posting products and fail here and fail there and adding them into a ton of groups like some of the other MLMs and different things like that. If they're unfriending us because of we're just sharing inspiration and wellness, then bye. I mean, really, I hate to be like that, yeah. but you're not providing any value to my life. So peace, you know, so and not everybody's going to see your stuff. There's going to be some friends. It's just not for them. And that's totally fine. And they'll stop engaging on your posts or maybe they want to engage on your posts. They're just not going to see your content anymore. And that's totally fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Amanda, did you have any questions or thoughts? Nope. Nope. You're good. Yep. All right. Well, Jamie, we will get you started on Instagram. Um, we will get you going consistently in, you know, posting on your personal page and, and really diving into the business. And then maybe next month, that's something that we can really start to focus on is learning Instagram stories and, um, just starting to post on Instagram. There, Jatana Jackson has a wonderful YouTube um, training on Insta stories and um, just using Instagram in general. And like I said earlier, she is slaying it. She is just amazing okay. to Instagram and Insta stories. Uh, she just has that personality that just is very alive. But she has a great training that um, we can definitely share with you um, to help you get started. Okay. All right, my love. All right. Well, you girls rock. I appreciate you for being here on the call. I will get the recording up just as soon as it's done converting. Um, I'm actually going to.